Archiving started. Hello, and welcome back to the Robotics Laboratory at Lawrence Technological University in Southfield, Michigan, where we're talking about PID controllers, theory and practice. This is video three in the series. Um, in this particular video, we'll be talking about proportional control, integral control, and PI control of motor velocity using a model of a DC motor that we built um, mathematically using MATLAB and Simulink in video two. And then after this, we'll move on to some practical things and controlling motor position, which is significantly different than controlling motor velocity. But just to refresh you, or if you hadn't seen the video too, this is the behavior of our mathematical model of a DC motor. Um, at one second in the simulation, I apply 10 volts right there, and it's on the plot, it's 100, but it's because I plotted voltage times 10 just to make it show up on the plot better. At 15 seconds, I apply a, um, an external load to the motor to slow it down, and this blue line is the motor speed. It runs up to speed and then slows down here. And then this graph on the right is the position as a function of time. This isn't any specific motor. Um, I just basically picked constants in my model to give me nice looking curves, but uh, it illustrates some of the points I want to make, so we'll run with it. So since we're talking about feedback control, the first step, of course, is to add feedback. And as you recall from the first um, video on our definitions, this is our physical plant. This is the DC motor. Uh, this plant has an output here. It could be speed. It could be position. In this, in this video, we're talking about controlling speed. We feed that back, and we compare the speed to our target speed of 500. So we subtract here, and we get our error. Air goes into our controller, which would be the P, the I, or the PI, and commands a voltage to the DC motor. Okay? So let's start out with a simple proportional control. We take our speed output, measured speed, subtract it from our 500 again. You'll hear this a lot. Subtract it. This is our error. Since this is proportional control, we know that we're going to do something in proportion to the input. We're going to multiply, and that's what we do. We multiply by our proportional gain. So the output here, let's, we call this Kp. After we multiply, what we get right here is our voltage equals Kp times error, or error equals the difference in voltage or difference in speed, so writing that out more completely, V equals Kp times 500, our target, minus speed. Okay? Yeah, that's really bad handwriting. Um, so here's, on the right is the behavior of the motor with just a constant 10 volts. You can see it takes about three seconds or so to get up to 500 RPM, but it doesn't really stay there very good. Uh, it just shoots right through. Now here with our feedback, a simple proportional feedback, we get up to speed much faster, but we don't quite reach that, right? And when we hit the, turn the disturbance on, it's the same disturbance. Instead of a big drop in the speed, we just get a little bit of a drop of the speed, you know, so that's an improvement. We've made it a little faster. We, we're holding a more constant speed, but we're not quite getting that target. Well, why not? You know, what's up with that? Well, let's suppose for a moment we were going 500 RPM. We were at our target speed, okay? The speed is right there. Well, in our equation here, 500 is our target minus the speed of, if that was 500, that would be equal to zero. Zero times Kp is zero. So we'd be getting zero volts to our motor, right? And if we don't put any power to the motor, it slows down. And as it slows down, this difference gets larger, and we start applying more and more voltage. And at some point, it reaches an equilibrium. 
and that equilibrium point depends on the magnitude of this KP um, and also on external loads and things. But the larger the KP, the smaller the difference between between the steady state and the target, okay? But you'll never quite reach that target. If we had used a value 10 times larger, you know, right now it looks like we've probably got about a 60 RPM delta with a KP equal to 0.1. If we'd used one instead of 0.1, we'd you know, only have about a 6 RPM delta, which is pretty close. But the other problem is, um, Sometimes larger gains can cause issue, issues with stability and other things that we'll talk about a little later on. But the key thing about proportional control is it acts instantaneously, right? Whatever this difference is right here, I've got a voltage as a result. It's very fast. It's just not accurate. For accuracy, we can use integral control. Now here, I've got my feedback speed like before. I've got my target like before. I subtract the two, I get my error. I multiply it by my gain again. So here I have KP times error. And then I integrate that value right there. So, and I get the voltage. So here my voltage equals... Yeah. The voltage equals the integral of K, I wrote KP, I meant KI, times that error, okay? Where the error is the difference between the um, target and the measured speed. So it's a little different control, and you can see it's actually fairly sluggish here. It took almost six seconds to get up the target in our simulation, overshot a little bit, and it comes down to here. And now we apply our disturbance. It takes a while. But it will eventually settle out right at that target RPM. As long as there's a difference, it'll keep integrating or keep accumulating and keep building that voltage as necessary to get you there. Now, in this case, when I turn the gain up um, on this plot on the right, I get a faster response. But you can see I get this overshoot and oscillation behavior, uh, which typically is undesirable, undesired. So what integral control gets you here is accuracy, because given time, it will nail that, that target um, speed, or target whatever, depending on what we're controlling, but it's slow and it tends to be less stable. So what happens if we put the two of them together? This is for controlling the velocity of something for most, probably, 80, 90% of the things we control. A PI controller is, is really what we want. You know, we always talk about PID. The D is problematic, and I'll, I'll get to that. But PI control is a general rule, does the job. So how do we do this? Again, we have our feedback, our set point, our error here. Uh, we take the error, multiply it by our proportional constant, add that there. We take the error, multiply it by our integral, constant integral gain, integrate it, add that in there. So now my voltage equals Kp times the error plus the in in integral of Ki times the error. Okay, and that's Oof, that's really hard to read. This pen is kind of funny. But to look at the performance of it, you see we have the speed of that proportional controller. I mean, we got up there in almost no time at all, and then we have the accuracy of the integral control. They nailed it, right? It is right there on the target. And even when we apply our disturbance, it doesn't take it very long to get right to where it needs to be. So that PI combination gives you the speed and the accuracy that does 99% of what you need to do most of the time. Um, on occasion, uh, you, have, you, you have stability issues. Um, you may have to resort to adding a derivative term. Generally, I don't recommend it for this kind of thing. I, when contrary to 
controlling position because um, the derivative derivatives get messy um, if if my input speed and I'm since I typically have to go through come some kind of analog to digital conversion even if I held it absolutely constant there's a tendency to get you know variations and noise in the value in the computer just because of the A to D jitter and A to D readings. And when you take the derivative of that, well, the derivative or the slope of a rate or the rate of change, even though the change is small, the slope is very high, right? Uh, I've drawn it as straight up, but really from sample to sample, you know, you get a very high slope and that tends to drive that derivative control to do a, a drastic change when there was no need. It's just a little noise, either A to D noise or just noise you've picked up from electrical noise and things like that. So typically to use a derivative control, you want to add some filtering uh, to kind of smooth it out, which then kind of undoes the derivative effect. But with a little work, you can make it work. And what I'll do is I'll, down in the uh, description, I'll put in a little sample pseudocode of how you might implement all this. And that's, that's the end of part three here. Um, talked about PI and PI controllers. So we'll move on to the next video, part four. We'll talk about what happened, some things that happened in the real world. And then part five, we'll talk about controlling motor position and why you want PD and not PI. And thank you for hanging in there. Bye.